Hey, Joe Gilder here from Personas. Today we're gonna to talk about how editing works inside of Studio One. Let's dive in. When I first started using Studio One, one of the biggest challenges for me was learning how to edit. I had come from Pro Tools and I had gotten very good at editing the Pro Tools way. And for a good while, I tried to make Studio One be Pro Tools. Now, I've talked about this in other videos. You can do things like open up the keyboard mapping scheme and set it to Pro Tools. So a lot of the same keyboard shortcuts that you know from Pro Tools will translate into Studio One. That was helpful for a season, but eventually I realized I need to try to use this software the way it was intended to be used. Uh, because it's clearly, to, if I'm just trying to make it into Pro Tools, then I've, I'm probably missing something, right? Because otherwise, why not just go use Pro Tools? And so I did. And a big kind of wake-up moment for me, I attended an event that Personas did at a studio here in Nashville. I believe it was over at RCA, Studio A or Studio B. And the, one of the demos was just showing really basic Studio One stuff, kind of some of the stuff I've been showing you in this series of videos. Uh, similar stuff, but there was one thing he showed that just blew my mind. The word editing can mean a lot of different things, but specifically for me, it has to do with manipulating the existing audio to get it closer to where it needs to be timing-wise. Let me show you what I mean. Here is a simple beat we're going to record a few measures to. Okay, so I intentionally, intentionally played that uh, progressively more and more ahead of the beat. So if we look and we zoom in on, for example, this hit, we can see the white line here, that is the down beat. That is the beat I was trying to play and I came in early. Now, in my days of learning how to use things like Pro Tools, the solution to stuff like this would be to cut the audio here, cut the audio here, slide that over to get it in time, uh, now we have this gap, I would need to drag that back, crossfade this, drag this back, crossfade that, and we're done. And that's a way you can work. One thing you'll note in Studio One, uh, there's a smart tool that you can enable by clicking here, which means up here I can select a range and do things like delete it. Down here in the bottom it becomes an arrow that lets me click and drag things. This other section over here are all my secondary tools that I can pull up by pressing my command key on the Mac or control on the PC. So this is the setup I use 99% of the time where when I press command it turns into a scissor tool that allows me to click and separate the region really easily. Okay, So I just did that and kind of did the Pro Tools version of fixing this out of time piece of audio. But the way Studio One handles it and what I call slip editing is my favorite thing ever. Let's go find something that's off. Okay, this beat right here. It was supposed to happen right on the 13 and it didn't. See, I got ahead of the beat for a couple of these. Here's what we can do. Instead of selecting it and moving it and then having to go back and redrag things around to fill in the gaps, we can do this. Okay, cut the region there, cut the region here. Now, I can hold down Command and Option that's control alt on the PC and now I can click and drag and look at what happens I am moving the audio but the edges of this region or this event are not moving so I can get those perfectly in time and then I can press X and it will do a crossfade on either end look how fast that is and we can go through and each each note we can see okay all of these are ahead of the beat, so let's make those get more in time. Great. This one, we can see it's still a little ahead of the beat, so let's do that. We'll select these and press X. That one looks a little behind the beat now, so we'll pull that back. We'll press X. Move that crossfade over a little bit. This one's still a little behind the beat. Move that, press X. And this is literally, like, not to kill the musicianship of everything, but as far as like if the bass player comes in just a little bit early and it makes that transition sound a little muddy, you can very easily and simply move things around, press X, you've got a crossfade, and now this entire section is much more in time. Let's listen. 
And the great thing is we haven't done any sort of time stretching or quantizing. We don't have to worry about some of the artifacts that can happen when you do that. Now, that said, I would be remiss if I didn't show this to you at least. We can do quantizing on audio, and Studio One will go in. It'll analyze the audio, it'll find the transients, and then it will attempt to fix the timing. And sometimes that is just, it just works. Uh, let me show you. I've got it selected, I press Q. That's it. It has now quantized this audio, and if we zoom in, we can see it has taken all the transients and has moved them to the appropriate bar. So what I just did, and took a few seconds to do, that you watch me do manually, we were able to do here by just pressing Q, and it automatically quantized. What you'll notice is it did not quantize every single note. It was just guessing. And honestly, I think it guessed right, because those in-between notes aren't nearly as important as the more accented beats that we have. And the way that it's doing this is through time-stretching algorithms, right? It is taking that audio. It's not editing it, editing it like I did. It's actually sliding and stretching the audio around. If we want, we can change our tool to this bend tool marker uh, tool here, and we can grab these tools and we can move them around. These bend markers can now be moved. So it moves it forward and it still sounds pretty good. You can go too far. If you stretch things too far, it starts to create artifacts. And technically, even the little bit of stretching we're doing here can technically create artifacts in the audio because we're manipulating the audio. The first version that I showed you doesn't change the audio at all because it's literally just moving and crossfading versus any time stretching. Neither is right nor wrong. I've used both in different scenarios. If it's something like this that's just a clap that's going to be a part of a much bigger mix with drums and everything else, I might say, you know what, this was pretty close. Okay, that's great. Let's move on. And I might even hit Command B to bounce that down as a new piece of audio so it's rendered and we're good to go. That is a very cool and quick workflow. Sometimes you want to go in and you want to do exactly what I did. Oh, it's just these two notes here that are bad. Everything else I want to leave alone. And we go and fix those. That's completely fine. You have both options. And to, in my opinion, both options are faster than other systems that I've used. And in some scenarios, it makes sense to have time stretching in others. Maybe it's just a demo and you just want to give a quick idea of what this is going to sound like. Uh, you're not that married to this particular clap track. You can just hit Q and be done with it and move on. A couple of other cool things. I didn't realize this was record enabled. A couple of other cool things we can do um, with editing. I mentioned this in the last video, but see how we recorded different takes? Well, let's, uh, let's do that over here with the clapping on this vocal. Let's... Let's bring layer two up and let's record. Okay, that was wonderful. Let's get another take of that. Let's try it on layer three. We already had layers there. We're just selecting which one is active and record there. Okay, that one was super hyper and lame. But guess what? Now we have all of these available to us. We can even create a new layer, and now they're all down here, and we can make this newest layer our, what a lot of folks call a comp track. So we can compile or make a compilation of the different performances. Now we can go in, we can listen to each one. So I can say, hit the little solo button here, and we'll hear this one. And then we can switch to this one. Or we can listen to this one. And we can go and decide which ones we want to be in our final compilation. And the way we do that is by simply clicking and dragging over them. You'll notice the tool here is a different shape than it is any other time. It does this automatically when you are hovered over the different takes or different layers of a track. And so I can say, I love the first bar of this. I love the second bar of this. And I really love how crazy I got here. And that groups those together automatically does crossfades between each one. And now when I hide all these layers and they're no longer visible, I just have my comped track here to listen to. <laughs> and it's just beautiful. A couple of other quick basic things to know and how editing works on audio in Studio One. First of all, you can increase or decrease the volume of the piece of audio by clicking and dragging on this little selector right here. 
you can go way loud and way farther down. If the, if the volume of the audio is good, but you just can't see the waveform very well, come down to this bottom right-hand corner where it says Data Zoom, click and drag, and now we're zooming in the size of the audio. This isn't changing volume, it's just so we can see things a little bit better. Do you want to do a crossfade, or do you want to do a fade at the beginning or end of a piece of audio? No problem, just select the audio, and you'll see this little triangle in the corner click and drag and now that is our fade. We can even adjust the shape of the fade by clicking and dragging here. This one fades in quickly, this one fades in super slowly and then kind of increases towards the end. We have all of those options available to us on every piece of audio inside of Studio One. And if we have two pieces of audio next to one another, we can hit X to crossfade between them and that's gonna allow us to have a smooth crossfade with none of those pops and clicks between them. We can even adjust the fades in and out and even adjust the shape in certain situations or even select the underlying piece of audio and make the crossfade bigger if there's situations where that needs to blend between the two. Those are all available to us. And you'll note that I didn't have to go to any other window or settings to do any of this. Um, didn't even have to use keyboard shortcuts. It's just all there other than the X for crossfade. It's all there for me to click and drag. Remember, Studio One is big on drag and drop, and that is a super simple, easy way to do that. Other cool things you may not know about, if I like this and I want to put it on another track, I can just drag it here and a new track is created. Uh, if I like this and I want to copy it down here, I can hold down Option, click and drag, and it'll create a copy and move it down. It's in line, it defaults to being in line unless I kind of intentionally drag it out of line. Selecting a multiple pieces of audio, there's a couple ways to do that. If you hover in the upper portion, it becomes this kind of marquee tool and we can select specific sections of audio and then delete them all at once if we want. We can select them and move them. This copies or moves that piece of audio and kind of extracts it from there. If we hold down Option while we do that, it will copy and paste it as opposed to removing it altogether. Now, if we want to select all of these audio without doing this and dragging over every single piece, we can hold our cursor in the lower half of the audio and we can either click and then hold down shift to click each piece of audio and then we can delete them all. Or if we're holding down just outside of one of those where we have an arrow, click and drag. And as long as that little gray area that came up is touching a piece of audio, it will select all of them and we can do that. Conversely, if we do the drag towards the top of a region where it becomes an X, now we can do like this and delete just what's inside. There's two different ways of clicking and selecting. That will take a little getting used to because that's different from the way a lot of other systems work, but that's how to quickly select and move things around. Now, I intentionally made this video just about audio editing because I honestly don't use much MIDI in my productions. Uh, I like to just play the parts in audio, but watch some of Gregor's video. He uses tons of MIDI and you can see all the different editing tools that you have available to you when working with MIDI. A lot of the similar tools as are available here, but this is one of the big things. That slip edit for me was a game changer where I can go and move, move the underlying audio without having to move the endpoints. If you do a lot of editing and pocketing and tightening up performances like that and you don't want to quantize, that is a lifesaver. Go try it right now. You're going to love it. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, leave a comment if you have questions. Be sure to subscribe to our channels. We've got lots more fun videos planned for you. Be, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a single one. And as always, thanks for watching.